Good afternoon, or evening, as the case may be. Uh, I'm Ben Sigelman. Uh, I am one of the co-creators of the Open Tracing Standard, and I'm also a co-founder and uh, the CEO at Lightstep, uh, where we deliver insights about uh, complex production software systems. So I'm here to talk about the service mesh, and in particular, how we can make better sense of a service mesh architecture. Uh, I will also be talking about open tracing a bit, observability, how to make things more operationally sane. And uh, I'm, I'm really uh, excited to talk about it. So I'll just get started. Uh, this is a picture of uh, a lot of birds, um, lots of them. Uh, there are uh, hundreds or thousands of them. This is a murmuration of starlings. And I, I chose this picture because I think it's evocative of the vision that we have for microservices. Uh, you have independent actors that are working in concert. Each one is sentient and has its own agenda, but taken together, they're greater than the sum of their parts. And honestly, it's beautiful. Like, the idea of microservices is beautiful. I was at this conference last year, and I don't know, there are a lot of people there, but a lot fewer than this year. I think that this vision is taking hold in our industry for a good reason, and it's a vision that we should all be pursuing together, and I'm happy that we're doing that. Oh, <laughs> I was like, that wasn't a laugh line. Um, <laughs> that bird, man, I, that, I'm gonna send that bird a thank you note. Uh, speaking of birds, this is perfect, perfect. <laughs> really couldn't have planned that any better. I'm so pleased about that. So, <laughs> thank you, bird. Uh, this is how it feels. You're on stage in your microservice deployment, and you're worried that it's going to, you know, have a bowel movement on you while you're on stage. So, operating microservices is very challenging. Uh, very challenging. Stop it. And. Uh, it's, it's for a lot of reasons. Some of them are fundamental, things that we're never going to get past. Software engineering is hard. Everyone here has a lot of job security if they're on that side of the house as a result. But some of them are not such good reasons. I think that we often find ourselves wanting to build application software, and yet what, what we're actually doing is writing the same code over and over again to do something that's actually like a hard computer science problem and should be factored into some kind of common interface, and yet, you know, we're doing it manually. So, service mesh can uh, help with discovery of services, interconnection of those services, circuit breaking, load balancing, that sort of thing. These are hard problems. You don't want to solve them yourself. Uh, service mesh can help uh, with security and authentication. Uh, you want to make sure that you discover uh, the wolf uh, without a lot of effort or custom code. And that's something that is near and dear to all of our hearts as well. We need to build secure things. Security should be built in from the firmaments, and that's what Service Mesh can offer us. What I'm really here to talk about is uh, transactions, though. So this is uh, evocative of what it feels like to look at a transaction in a typical microservices architecture. Each piece, each service is written in a slightly different way, maybe a slightly different language or a very different language, different idioms, different frameworks. And when they don't work, they don't work in spectacular fashion. It's often incredibly difficult to figure out what happened. And yet we have to do that. Like the, the transactions that don't work are the most important. They're often stranger than fiction when you actually do the postmortem and figure it out. But you want to do, you want to understand that explanation rapidly. And that can be a difficult thing. So, uh, you know, what about this? Uh, this is my favorite tweet of all time. Uh, we replaced our monolith with microservices so that every outage could be more like a murder mystery. This is, this is something that, that we need to move away from as an industry. <laughs> it's a really bad feeling. I've had it. I'm sure everyone here who's ever been on call has had this feeling of like, oh gosh, like I don't know what's going on and I need to figure it out quickly. Microservices should not be getting in your way. And yet, sometimes it feels like that's exactly what they're doing. So the canonical answer to that problem of understanding transactions is distributed tracing. Uh, distributed tracing is about telling stories about specific transactions 
across distributed systems, across service boundaries. And this could be microservices, it could be serverless, it could just be a bunch of monoliths that are all talking to each other, it doesn't matter. The idea is that you need to stitch things together and develop a unified picture and a unified explanation for the behavior of individual transactions. Uh, what you see here is, uh, on the left, is Jaeger, which is another CNCF project. On the right is my company's Trace, uh, Trace Viewer. Both of these are OpenTrace and compatible. They're actually OpenTracing native. Um, Zipkin also uh, works with OpenTracing. Uh, many other awesome vendors uh, who I have a lot of respect for, New Relic, Datadog, they are also coupled to OpenTracing. And the reason why we're doing this uh, is because we shouldn't have every developer having to manually integrate into distributed tracing. There's too many touch points. There's too much diversity of, of uh, language, too much diversity of framework to have everyone integrate with everything. And open tracing is a lingua franca for describing the behavior of transactions and making that possible. So when the service mesh, you know, became a thing really quite rapidly and has taken off, it's a natural point of integration for something like open tracing. So let's talk about transaction tracing without a service mesh. You've got, you know, four services. Uh, they're talking with each other. They're all written in different languages or different frameworks. And you have these um, uh, touch points in and out of every service where you need to, at the minimum, you need to think about tracing. And the data from those touch points goes into the tracing system. Uh, there are many points of integration here. Uh, again, if you're dealing with many languages, that's a lot of work. Uh, and open tracing can help a certain amount here, but gosh, it would be nice if at least those touch points between services could be factored out. And yet, that's exactly what the service mesh gives us. So, too many points of integration in a service mesh, it looks, starts off the same, you have your services, uh, but now you have these um, sidecars that run, a lot, you know, either on the way in or the way out, on ingress or egress from your services, and service mesh is a level seven proxy, so it's completely reasonable to integrate with application level things like distributed tracing systems. So now our connections go through the service mesh, the service mesh integrates with open tracing, and open tracing integrates with, oh, whoops, sorry, uh, sorry, slide problem. Um, open tracing integrates with many different vendors and open source tracing systems, as well as other tools. You can build a bridge from open tracing to Prometheus, for instance. And great, now we've got visibility. So we're done. Uh, we're victorious. It's a great feeling to be done. So let's look at some of our traces. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of one earlier, if you do it this way. This is not what we ordered. Uh, we wanted a trace that has a lot of structure and tells a story about a transaction. We wanted something that looks like this, where you have a shared timing diagram that shows many different services and how they interact. Uh, but somehow we had this instead. So that's, that's not what we wanted. We did integrate with every RPC, but this isn't what we wanted. So, you know, what, what happened? Um, we're not so victorious after all. So observing every RPC is great. I would say it's necessary. And Service Mesh gives us an incredible, incredible lever to do that. And I'm incredibly excited about it. Uh, personally, I've seen what's happened at Lyft uh, with Envoy. They were able to stand up tracing across their entire system of hundreds and hundreds of services with a, with a configuration change. It was profound, honestly. It was incredible to watch. Uh, um, but you do need to tie things together. Just observing the edges alone is not sufficient. And uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. The documentation will say something like, oh, you know, you need to forward the header from ingress to egress. And that, that is true, like that works. It can be easy for a simple service. If your services are more complex, if they have queuing in, in the middle of them, or if there's some kind of fan out, fan in behavior, it gets a little bit harder. In certain languages, it's even harder than that. And this is the problem that Open Tracing was designed to solve. Open tracing was designed to describe that sort of behavior so that no matter what sort of tool or what sort of solution you're pursuing, you can see all of that. So we can use open tracing both the service mesh layer and within the process to connect these dots in a way that's truly end to end. So it's, you're using service mesh for a single integration point at every RPC boundary and we're using open tracing within the process to propagate all of this state. 
And this really does work and is actually a, a really wonderful thing in practice. Um, the cool thing here is that as an application developer, the, the somewhat cool thing is that you haven't coupled yourself to a particular downstream tracing system or observability tool. Um, the really cool thing is that you're not writing a ton of code yourself to integrate into tracing. And if you're running microservices and you want to debug things quickly, I think you need it. I don't think it's a, I'm biased, but I don't think it's something that's optional. I think it's a necessity. Uh, and you know, when we integrate with open tracing, we get more detail about the processes as well, which will help for root cause analysis. So I think this is getting a little bit dry. I even saw some of you on. Uh, the birds have stopped. It's not as interesting anymore. Um, so we need to apply this to something important, something with food coloring, um, something that uh, we can really get excited about. So uh, let's talk about donuts. So I want to introduce Donut Zone. I like doing demos involving donuts. Uh, donut Zones, their motto is move fast and bake things. Um, we uh, are offering a DAS. So donuts as a service. Uh, scaling really fast, running into performance problems. Built with service mesh using Envoy in this case and also built with open tracing. And um, so yeah, this is Donut Zone. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time describing the architecture here. I don't think it's necessary for the purposes of this presentation. But suffice it to say, there are several services. There's a controller. There's a service that fries donuts. There's a service that applies toppings, whether they be sprinkles or chocolate or cinnamon. And there are external dependencies on BrainPal, the uh, popular payment system. Um, and a number of clients, uh, web clients, that, that order donuts and restock things. Um, so at this point, I think it's time for a live demonstration. Uh, I will go over here for that. All right, so first I'm actually gonna show uh, Donut Salon. This is a, a slightly same idea, different domain. Donut Salon is uh, hooked up to Jaeger. I wanted to show that this works with multiple different tracing systems, the same code in both cases. Uh, it's a pretty simple idea here. You can order donuts. We have, we're featuring three different types of donuts for this demonstration. Um, you can also restock donuts. Uh, if you go to the uh, bottom here, you can restock donuts. So I, I can add more chocolate donuts um, and uh, see the numbers go up, or I can order some more. Okay, great. So you can order donuts and then there's uh, some asynchronous JavaScript and XML, some AJAX here that uh, allows you to see which donuts you've received. And, uh, oh, someone's already gone in here and ordered donuts, you rascals. Um, <laughs> you can't trust anybody these days. I didn't say to do that. Um, anyway, so I can go in here and uh, in Jaeger I can say I want to see things that took at least half a second and indeed uh, yeah, here's, a, here's a trace showing uh, one of those um, particular requests, this one resulted in error because we'd run out of inventory due to whomever in the audience is sneakily going to this domain on your own. Um, but you can see it propagating across this, this uh, simple distributed system as we uh, uh, top the donuts and fry them and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's, it's cool. Um, I do actually want to encourage some audience participation. So. Um, but I want you to go to donut.zone instead of uh, donut salon. Uh, .zone domains um, have not been fully tapped like the .com, so I was able to get uh, a donut domain even if it was a .zone instead of a .com. Uh, so I encourage you to go there and order things on your phone. I'll, I'll, I'll do the same. Um, I think it looks like there's too many people ordering, so I would also recommend going to the restocking and uh, restocking some donuts. Um, it's pretty fun. People are probably already kind of uh, going crazy. I can see the numbers here are going nuts. Um, I will admit this was load tested um, uh, in a somewhat um, insufficient way given the number of people in the room here. So uh, if it falls over, I apologize. Um, uh, but yeah, maybe we should stop. Um, <laughs> it's been a good run, everybody. Wow, that's a lot of donuts. It's still up, it's still up. This is great news. Okay, well, I'm, okay, let, let's stop. Let's really stop. <laughs> so let's look at some of the latest examples of, of orders for sprinkle donuts. Um, uh, I can, uh, yeah, bring these up. Um, well, these are all uh, 
these are examples of, of donuts that we've, we've run out of donuts in these cases, um, but that's okay. Uh, you see a lot of um, uh, errors here because of, of donut exhaustion. I think I actually have an example of a donut that, um, that actually uh, did come through. Um, this is a, a trace from uh, just, just before the talk. Um, these traces are all legitimate, but there are no more donuts. I think that's what's happening there. This is um, a trace showing this timing diagram. Um, actually, I wanted to show what this looks like if we just have the service mesh. It's, it's, um, it's definitely useful. You can see uh, the propagation from the browser into the front end proxy and through the frying process as well as the donut topping process. But that's really all we get to see. Um, we can look at um, you know, URLs and things like that, but it's not possible to really get to the bottom of what's going on. All we know is that that's slow. Um, if I look, for example, at this trace that involves the interior of the process, not only have we stitched things together, but we've also added more detail. In this case, the mutex library actually gives information um, about uh, how many waiters were in front of us for a mutex lock. In my mind, this sort of thing, well, in fact, I know this from our own internal debugging at Lightstep, this can be really invaluable to understand that the slowness is coming from contention around a particular shared resource. This is the kind of thing where you don't want to just see the service, you want to dig in, in, inside the service and really make sense of it. Um, and we can even do things like, um, uh, yeah, I mean, we can, um, we can go and, and look for examples of traces that had, you know, 20 waiters in front of us instead of, instead of uh, just four and, and see where the uh, latency comes from. And indeed, you can see when you have to wait for 20 users in front of you on the mutex, that ends up dominating um, the end-to-end -end latency for these requests. So in my mind, I don't want to go into like, great detail about debugging this fake app, but I, I do want to hopefully it comes through that these sorts of analyses are fairly trivial if you have all this data. And they're quite the opposite if you don't, uh, incredibly the opposite, especially when you have a lot of concurrency. And although this feels like a big room with a couple of thousand people in it, which it is, it's a small room if you compare it to the user base for any kind of scaled out enterprise product or consumer application. Um, this is the kind of concurrency we're all dealing with all the time. And it's crucial to have technology like this to make sense of it. Um, so I only have a few minutes left. I want to get back to my, my, my speech here. So um, open tracing is uh, uh, integrated or nearly integrated with all of these. Um, Envoy, Istio, uh, Conduit, which was just announced by Buoyant a few days ago and I'm excited about, as well as Nginx and the Engine Mesh project. Um, these support open tracing, which means that you know, any open tracing compatible um, uh, project or, or vendor can just plug into these things directly. Uh, and one of the things I get really excited about, and about CNCF actually, and about this sort of integration, is that Envoy, Istio, Linkerd, uh, Conduit, Nginx, these things are exciting technologies. Open tracing is also an exciting technology, but when you combine them, they're actually greater than the sum of their parts. This, this family of projects, they're not just um, independently useful. And it goes back to my flock of birds in the very beginning. I think the, the sum is greater than parts in this case, and it's something that's really exciting to me uh, as a developer and as a technologist to see how these things make each other better. And when you combine them, it's, it's even more powerful, um, more powerful still. And uh, I just think that's exciting. Uh, speaking of feel-good messages and preschool and stuff like that, we're going to have some small group discussions that are more friendly to Q&A than something like this uh, that uh, relate to both open tracing and service meshes. Tomorrow from 3.50 until 5.10, uh, there is a salon for open tracing. Uh, I would love people to attend. There will be a bunch of us there. Matt Klein from Envoy will be there as well. And we can talk about the sort of material in this talk, help people get basic questions answered, as well as you know, just have a kind of support group about deploying this kind of stuff in production and, and the types of problems that we're all facing. Uh, Jaeger, an, an awesome CNCF project that um, is a distributed tracing system, is having their salon tomorrow, as is Linkerd. And the Envoy salon was fantastic. Uh, that was earlier today, unfortunately, so you can't go to that one if you didn't already go, but I, I hope you went. I heard it was fantastic. Um, and, uh, oh, that's it. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I wanted to thank everyone for uh, listening. It's, it's been a great pleasure to, to be here, and I'm really excited about the rest of this incredible conference. 
And uh, yeah, w with that, um, I thank you, and I will plug the Ethernet jack in for uh, the next presenter. <laughs>